Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Would you stand to your feet, please? Let's praise the Lord together this morning. This song is one you probably know. It's called, I Love You, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I live my voice to worship you, oh, my soul, rejoice. I would say if you have a hymn book, find such as a, no, 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 no. <laughs> I want you to, if you, if you already have one, close it, set it down. Gently. They're not yours. <laughs> okay? I want you to look to the person next to you and say, I'm glad you're here. I this am morning. glad you're here. Glad you're here. Because I can't play guitar. No. Uh, I can't sing two vo with two voices. I can't. It does. Check. It does. Now, if there's a person on the other side of you, wherever they are, say the same thing. Say, I'm glad you're here today. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. And if you feel so inclined, why don't you shake that person's hand? Both of them. You got it. It's okay. That's all right. Yeah. I am so glad that our Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see This is a wonder that Jesus loves me I am so glad that Jesus loves me Jesus loves me Jesus loves me I am so glad that Jesus loves me Jesus loves me Though I forget him and wander away, still he doth love me wherever I stray. Back to his dear loving arms would I flee when I remember that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me, Jesus loves even me. Oh, if 
There's only one song I can sing When in his beauty I see the great king This shall my song in eternity be Oh, what a wonder that Jesus loves me I am so glad that Jesus loves me Jesus loves me Jesus loves me I am so glad that Jesus loves me Jesus loves me so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. You may be seated, church. Thank you for singing with us. Good morning, church. Good to see everyone this beautiful morning. Praise God. Amen. Verse for the month here in your bulletin. And uh, we welcome those that's with us today and those visiting. We ask you to pray for those that are traveling and out sick as well. Verse of the month is in your bulletin. This is Romans 5, 6 through 8. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some will even dare to die. But God commandeth his love towards us, in that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Amen. Praise his, his word. But good morning to each of you today. And uh, no snow here in this area, but uh, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but... Um, at this time, I ask for our deacons to come forward for our morning tithes and offerings, please. Can I get wireless two on? Thank you. Thanks, Lord. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, uh, as you were the fourth man in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Holy Christ. We pray that your delivering power would be upon Solid Rock Assembly, Lord Jesus Christ, and upon our loved ones. We pray that we would worship you in spirit and in truth, and we would hear from you this day, precious Holy Spirit, living, risen Christ. We praise you and honor you here, and we hope and pray to get that right before you. In Jesus' name, we need you so. Help us always know this, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Please bring your tithes and offerings to the front. we have, Lord, and please bless this offering to you, God, and bless this church, Lord, this holy church, Lord, and bless this, our nation, Lord, and cover our nation in the blood, God, and send angels to protect us all, Lord, in this dark world full of hate and sorrow, God, and thank you for all the light that you shine on us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 All right, our children is, are dismissed, amen. That's Brother Josh Janelle to make his way forward for our scripture reading this morning. Folks, 
No, y'all just sat down, but you reckon you want to stand right back. I want up. <laughs> We're in First John chapter three. Going to start at uh, verse ten. We'll give you a second. Let everybody know I love being here. I'm so thankful for all of you. <laughs> Pray that the Lord opens our ears, and our hearts, our spirits, our minds. Sorry. <laughs> Get a little closer. I'm a quiet talker. I'm going to go ahead and start. And this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not marvel, my brethren, and this, if this world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. But whoever has this world's goods, excuse me, but whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide within him? My little children, let us not love in word and tongue, but in deed and truth. And by this we know that we are of, tr of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and knows all things. Beloved, if our hearts does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. I'm going to read that one again. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. And however we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on his name and his son Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment. That's the word. Thank you. This time we're blessed this morning. Ask Brother Nikki to come on up. Bless us in song this morning. Amen. Before I get around to the song, I want to. I got a poem I want to read, and uh, <clears throat> and I want to tell you that uh, this this poem's kind of about uh, addiction of any kind, really, mostly drug addiction. What 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 drugs are doing to? Uh, the society. But let me back up just a minute and tell you about like the turn of the century, what, what people used to do, what the martyrs had done to them. Uh, when uh, the enemy was using uh, Catholicism or the Catholic Church to destroy the Christian and the right way, they would take some of the faithful martyrs, <clears throat> and there wasn't a whole lot of medication back then, and they would pull their teeth and leave them in a dungeon. <clears throat> and they would put them, attach them to ropes and pull their joints out of socket. And then they would have somebody, so-called doctor, that would come and put them back together, put their joints back in socket, and then repeat it a couple months later. That's how, that's how the enemy really works. Terrible, terrible thing. Fast forward to the present day, and you've got, it, it, it's, it's genius, and I take nothing from it, the genius, because it's God given the knowledge to come to this, that, that they can find parts in your body, in your earthly tabernacle, and give you medicine for it, and bring relief. That is amazing, and I take nothing from that. 
But I tell you we're in a time in these last days where the enemy is swallowing people by the millions because of prescribed dope, because of drugs. Because it knocks this thinker in neutral and the enemy just really runs havoc with that. He just uses that and destroys so many souls. Because he takes, you know, he takes away from you looking at him and he takes away, it makes it, uh, let me see how to put it. Um, it just takes away from the value of Christ. Amen? Because you're so concerned about the pain you have to endure. Wait a minute. Let me think about that a minute. Is that what we're here for? I was thought I was hearing things. Let me, I'm, I'll go on and read this. I'm going to read the poem, then I'm going to read a few scriptures, and then I'll get around to the song. <clears throat> this poem is titled, I've entitled it Sidetracked, okay? That's the, that's the title, Sidetracked. A foul seed was sown in the garden on that day, a maligning of the truth, this hazing of the way. In a moment, a stir, a lurking, at the edge of my thought, a cold, indifferent presence, not aware for me I'm being sought. I see a vast ocean view and an evening desert scene. This reflects vacant thought, not intending our Lord to demean. When do we define a bankrupt soul? Can void fill each atom while part of the whole? With injections of ornamental trappings that sparkle and shine, they invite you to look, they invite you to dine. My mind entertains this mirage and searches for more show. As hunger is now increasing, such desires I know. I move to the side. Seems I'm going my way. Only one image now. Have I begun to stray? The sun seems fainter and farther from view. One mirror, one image. Hey, this person is who? An example is needed here to color in the lines. The enslaving of oneself who have fenced in their minds a massive unfurnished room wait a minute let me back up yeah a massive unfurnished room with cots all in a row they're occupied with people no ambition to go content just to lay there dismissing every sign so many captives surrendered just feed me one more time a line in for lunch these bodies do lay corpses already rehearsed for the grave the thrill long gone. Excitement now fades. I've starved this mind of good design and made myself a slave. Oh, but the master's table, furnished beneath a gleaning of the crumbs with bright-eyed anticipation looking for the coming of God's Son. The Christ has always been there, but selfish eyes won't see. Forgive me, Lord, I need restored. There's more to life than me. I'm going to read a few scriptures from Isaiah. If you want to turn, it's Isaiah 59. And I'll be reading verses 10 <clears throat> through 16. And see where we're at today, okay? This was written about 600 years before Christ came. We grope for the wall like the blind. We grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. We roar all like bears and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none for salvation. For salvation, but it is far off from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. In transgressing and lying against the Lord, departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood, the judgment is turned away backward, and justice stands afar off, for truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. 
Is that, is that amazing? Can you see why Christians are persecuted? You depart from evil and you make yourself a prey? Wow, that seems completely backwards, isn't it? That's because it is. <clears throat> and the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness, it sustained him. And one more scripture, and I'm going to introduce this song with this scripture right here. It's in, it's in uh, the gospel according to St. John, the 15th verse, I mean the 15th chapter, 4th verse. I'm going to read it so I don't quote it wrong. And, uh, okay. Jesus, Jesus says this this is for everybody that's blood bought and if you aren't I encourage you you seek the face of the Lord Jesus Christ because he's worthy of your worship and all he wants to do is <laughs> be your friend it's amazing isn't it <clears throat> Jesus says this abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. Yeah. One, two. Oh, he's got it. Okay. Keep it up. Keep it up just a little bit, Kenny, with his power. Thank you.
church this morning, uh, the first lady of Solid Rock, she said, I can sing a, a certain song that I, I'll, let, I'll let you hear what it is. I can sing that this morning if you want to. I told her, as if you ever have to ask, of course you can. Would you please put your hands together for my little sweet mama? Thank you, thank you, Amen. Good morning. Like I said, always ask. Amen. <laughs> He's been sweet to me. Brother Nicky, I love that song this morning. Amen. 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 This kind of goes along, along with it, but one of the ladies that sang this song is a well-known gospel singer, Linda Randall, and I love the way she does this song. And I uh, got to meet her in the ladies' bathroom. <laughs> We were all at a concert over at, uh, I believe it was um, yeah, where we were, but uh, she comes in there, and she's the sweetest lady, lady you ever want to meet. But I love this song. It says, God on the mountain, no matter what you're going through, he's there with us. Amen. Go ahead, sweetheart. Right. No, it's singing with in a few minutes in 1 Kings chapter 18. Um, what I got to say this morning is going to be a little difficult to swallow, but it's necessary. In um, 1 Kings 18, we find that God was punishing Israel for going after other gods, false gods. 
Now these gods had drawn the children of Israel into sexual immorality, perversion, and the sacrificing of their little babies to these gods. Now, Jonathan Kahn has researched this very heavily, and he did a good job. He described the, that three of these particular gods, which were prevalent during that day and today as well, as the dark trinity. That's a good way to put that. They were Baal, Ashtaroth, or Ishtar, and Molech. But what I find most interesting is that these gods are still worshipped today, if not more than ever, and not in some dark foreign land, but right here in America, big time. Now, just like it's described in Romans chapter 1, how it gets started is when we no longer want God included in our hearts and minds and in our education and in our life. And right now, we've got at least two generations that want nothing to do with God. Church is a joke and moral living is laughed at and even shunned. That started in the 60s. History has shown that right after that type of a thing happens, a nation will then have what is called a sexual revolution, where anything goes. And then after that has gone on for a while, every single time, a homosexual revolution. I will say this, thank God for the few young people today that are still willing to make a stand and serve God. Thank God for y'all. Just like Romans chapter 1 warned, God has turned countless thousands of folks over to a depraved mind, a mind that cannot be reasoned with, not even if you show them the facts right to their face. And that's why that I saw a video of a classroom full of toddlers and little children up to four and five years old and young moms sitting with them fixated on a man dressed as a woman reading stories to these little children and teaching them about what he calls diversity and acceptance when I call it indoctrination. And not only would he be reading stories, he would get up and swish around in a sexually suggestive manner in front of those children. All the while, mom sitting there applauding them. I'm sorry, but if you're one of those, you're a sorry, low-down mother that has no business with children. Now we have Disney, which catered to millions and millions of children every year and used to be known for wholesome entertainment, featuring a cartoon called The Proud Family. And it teaches nothing but CRT to children, critical race theory. And it calls everything and everybody that disagrees with the cartoon a white supremacist. And it even has the white children in the cartoon despising their own self. Self-loathing is a part of Baal worship. And being shamed for being white and repeating over and over the phrase, America was built on slavery. Our public school classrooms has joined the worship of false gods by calling children whatever pronoun they wish to hear for the day and even accommodate them, accommodating them when they want to identify with being an animal, including putting litter boxes in the bathrooms. And it is forbidden that a teacher even tell a child that they are a boy 
or a girl based on their gender. They're forbidden from doing that and will lose their jobs if they confront that. Poor old demon-possessed Charles Manson at least had sense enough to one day to tell Geraldo Rivera, said, if you sing like my fire to your children all their life, when they grow up, they will light your fire. And they're lighting it right now, buddy. Now we elect leaders, not for their concern for our nation's well-being, but leaders who will allow us to live the filthy lifestyle that we as a nation desire to live. That's true. We shop around to find out who will let us do the most God-awful things we can think of, and we will elect them. All the while selling out our children without one single thought of their future. Folks, this is what the Bible refers to as absolute depravity. This is where we are. And the powers that be are targeting Christians and churches. And now even they leaked a memo, the FBI admitted that they are going after what they call radical traditional Catholics, calling them white supremacists because of their stand on abortion and same-sex marriage. Well, what do they think about us, for crying out loud? I tell you what, whatever they want to label me, I'll wear it as a badge of honor. Bring it on. But you know, honestly, this is actually nothing new. We, it, a lot of us think it is, but it's nothing new. It has happened in countless ages and in countless places, and it's how we handle this it's, is what counts. And I want to remind everybody this morning that God is still on his throne. Elijah had this to happen in his own country, by his own king and queen, and amongst his own people. So what did Elijah do? Did he become woke? He stood up and faced it head on. He declared the wrath of God upon the people and told them there would be no more rain until God says so. And that's still true with this country as well. Nothing's going to happen until God says so. And if he punishes, he can punish and he can take it off and do whatever he wants. They went through a three-year drought in Israel, absolutely devastating. Their economy and their food supply was in ruins. Does that sound familiar to anybody? And it was because of their sin, and the sin particularly of the leadership of that land. In 1 Kings chapter 18, it says, And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year that they had no rain, saying, Go show yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. He wanted him to go confront this wicked man. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. And Ahab called Obadiah, who was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. And for it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the land that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. Also remember, God always has a people. He's always got somebody waiting in the wings. Don't forget that. And so Ahab had told Obadiah, Go into the land and all the fountains of waters and brooks per adventure. We may find grass to save the horses and mules alive and loose not all the beasts. And he sent him out there to go find him. And then he went and told Elijah, Behold, Elijah is here. And in verse number 16, we're dropping down a little bit. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him. And Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass, here we go, listen to this carefully because you will hear this all the time. You'll see this on TV. When Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Are you he that troubles Israel? That's typical of wicked leadership with depraved minds. In their minds, it's always the godly who are to blame. 
with their bigotry and their narrow-mindedness. I'm like that Christian comedian. I can't think of his name to save my life right now. He said, you call me narrow-minded. He said, you're, you're right, I am, because I'm right. I can afford to be narrow-minded. You can. You can afford to be narrow-minded if you're right. If you're following the Word of God, you be just as narrow-minded as you want to be. It's the truth. But rather than cowering to the woke mob of the day, they had them then too. That's nothing new. By the way, woke, I'll give you the definition real quick. Woke is accepting Satan as your Savior. That's what it is. Sugarcoat it all you wish, but that's exactly what it is. Elijah here stands alone against the evil ones and has no fear when he does so. By himself standing against the hundreds of evil prophets. Oh, we need another Elijah. We need more people to become another Elijah. And so Elijah answered the king. I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house, and that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and you followed Baal. Folks, it's time to preach the truth without apology. You can't wring your hands and hide and go find a preacher that will lie to you and pat you on the back and ultimately join you in hell when you die. You need people to preach the truth without apology. It's time now to bring it all out in the open and confront the wickedness, and Elijah did just that. So he tells the king, Now therefore send and gather to me all of Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal 450, and the prophets of the grove 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. And so Abraham sent, and unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together into Mount Carmel. He hears the thing. He's so evil and so depraved that he had no idea that God was setting him up to lose and to crash right in front of all the people. That's one of the marks of having a reprobate mind. It tends to make you ignorant sometimes. The following is a message from Elijah to Israel, but one that our nation needs to hear as she right now is pursuing Baal as hard or even harder than Israel ever did. Elijah came unto all the people and he said this, how long are you gonna halt between two opinions? If the Lord be God, then follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And of course the people didn't answer a single word. That would be the response that we see today. No committal. People are afraid to commit to anything. But I will say this to you, and I don't know if you've noticed the acceleration of wickedness, particularly in our land and even globally, but it's decision time, people, and it's right now. It's not next week. It's right now. You've got to decide who you're going to follow and what you're going to do. So then Elijah said to the people, I, even I only remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. He was completely outnumbered. We as a church are completely outnumbered when you look at the world. And the majority of the world is against what we do. We are bigoted and narrow-minded according to the rest of the world because we don't give in to all of the evil that's going on. And eventually they're going to step up the game and uh, over and over till they're going to start raiding churches and putting them in jail. When the FBI thinks that the Catholics are a danger, I'm going to answer them like the Joker did. Wait till they get a load of me. Then he said this, now therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under and I will dress the other bullock and put it on, lay it on wood and put no fire under. And he told the wicked prophets of Baal, he said, then call you 
on the name of your gods and I will call on the name of the Lord and the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And all the people then said, yeah, okay, that's cool, it's well spoken. And Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it for you are many and call on the name of your gods but put no fire under it. And so the wicked prophets of Baal took the bullock which was given them and they dressed it, cut it up, laid it on the altar, and then they started calling on the name of Baal from morning and, and even until noon, hollering, Oh, Baal, hear us! But there was no voice, nor any that answered, and they leaped upon the altar that was made. May I say this, those that follow after false gods, those gods will not help you when it all turns sour. Satan will not help you when it all turns sour. He steps back and he laughs. That's his game. But so many people are falling for it. So it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and he said, cry aloud. In other words, holler a little bit louder, folks. For he is a God. Either he's talking or pursuing or in a journey or maybe he's asleep and needs to be awakened. You see, he did that with boldness because he knew who he served. Amen. Do you know who you serve today? Do you have Holy Ghost boldness in the face of the wicked? And listen to this. They cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. I want everyone to understand that this cutting thing that has been going on since basically the 90s, it's Baal worship. It is. It's Baal worship. Be wary. And it came to pass when midday was past, they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. Man, they hollered all day yeah. to the evening. And there was no voice nor any to answer or any that regarded. Oh, boy. And then Elijah said to all the people, by, he's there by himself, come near to me. And all the people came near unto him. And he, the first thing he did was so symbolic of what is needed today, he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. America needs to get back to an old-fashioned altar and repent this morning all over this land. Turn off the smoke machines and the glitter balls and the spotlights and find an altar somewhere and get in front of it and kneel and repent of your sins. Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob unto the, whom the word of the Lord came saying Israel will be your name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. Then he put the wood in order and he cut the bullock in pieces and laid it on the wood and then he told them this. And there's a lot of significance with what I'm going to read. Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And then he told them, do it a second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. Very few people realize what a big deal that was because there was no water in the land. They were killing each other over a barrel of water. America needs to cultivate, listen carefully, America needs to cultivate the idea of giving living, as the great preacher Chuck Milhuff used to say. He preached a sermon on that called Giving Living, one of the most dynamic messages I've ever had, a really life-changing message. But people are afraid to sacrifice to the Lord anymore. Their time, their talent, their resources and money are for them alone and they don't feel a compulsion to give much of it 
at all. A lot of people don't. Now, may I say that those who do understand what I'm saying and, and that you cannot outgive God. It's not possible. I even tried it in an experiment one time, and he scared me to death. And it, you can't outgive him. I challenge anybody, give ever, ever, what you have, your time, your talent, your resources, your money, try to give our God and see what he does for you. If you want the fire to fall in your life, if you want miracles in your life, you got to be willing to give to the Lord sacrificially. Your salvation is free. You don't pay for any of that, but the closer you walk with the Lord, the more it will cost you, but the more it will blow you away as to what he'll do with your family. And then the water ran about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. The entire sacrifice was soaking wet so that no normal fire could do anything here. And again, we need that. We must be in a position that only God can get us out of God alone. And we are seeing that now. And God is waiting to see what we're going to do. Are we going to run and cower and fold and go along with whatever? We're going to make our stand and let God come to the rescue. Then it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. Elijah the prophet came near, and this was a simple prayer, nothing elaborate. He did, I bet he didn't even roll his R's like some of the old-time preachers used to do. He said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and have done all of these things that thy word Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that you are the Lord God and you have turned their heart back again. What a prayer. That ought to be on the lips of everybody here. O oh Lord, let it be known that there is a God in America and that I am your servant. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, the wood, it even consumed the rocks and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. That's Holy Ghost fire right there. That's not normal fire. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. Folks, for me personally, I want miracles in my life. I want them in my family's life, my church's life, in such a big way that everyone around us will declare the Lord, he is the God. He is the God. The very God, the only God. That's the purpose of miracles. And Elijah said unto them, take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape and they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. Folks, I want you to understand that this is the ultimate fate of the wicked. They sit and they dictate filthy laws, and they marginalize the people of God and even God himself, and they torment his people for trying to live holy. Well, this is the message of God for all that do evil and think they're getting away with. You do not do evil and get by. I know that's what it looks like right now, but God's waiting, and he's going to deal with it. And so Elijah told Ahab, get up, uh, eat and drink, for there's a sound of abundance of rain. And, and we see then that a black cloud came after Elijah's servant went several times to go look, and then the place was absolutely deluged with rain. It fell everywhere. All because people turn back to God. If you want a solution to the problems that we've got in this nation and around the world, people need to turn back to God. People need to stop running after the things of the devil, stop following those false gods and the things that they beckon them to do. 
We need to put, that when they gave what they called, and I didn't have the stomach to watch it, I'll be honest, the State of the Union Address. I can read the Word of God and tell you what the State of the Union is. They were running around with, instead of name tags, they had the word abortion with a heart to love and, uh, where the O goes on there. They're proud of their Molech worship. They're proud of it. You'd be stunned at how many of the people in the leadership of this land worship these false gods. They make their laws according to the dictates of these false wicked gods. And it's time to turn it around. But America's church needs to turn around and stop going with the flow and make a stand and scare these devils. You resist the devil, he'll flee from you. But so far, America's church hasn't resisted much of anything. And we need to make a stand today that as an individual and as a family and as a church and as a nation, that we're not going to put up with this wickedness any longer. And make a stand today. Is it going to cost you something? Yeah, it will. It'll cost you something. But you've got to be willing to pay the price to see revival. I understand there's a revival starting in some college somewhere, and there's hundreds of young people that showed them worshiping that's been going on for, I think, four days nonstop, 24 hours a day. And that's what's needed. It needs to break out over the entire nation. But it won't as long as we're holding the line for the dark trinity instead of the holy trinity. We need to turn around. We need to make a change in our life and in our family's life if we're going to make a difference. Shall we stand? I only touched the tip of the iceberg with this today, but I hope I got the point across. But we do need revival. We need the hearts of our people to turn around and not go along with this stuff anymore. Start living like Christians as a family. That's what needs to be done. And you'll be amazed at what God will do with your family and your life and your church if we make that move. Perhaps today you may have come and you have never accepted Christ as your Savior. We've got some folks standing here that will take an open Bible and pray with you and where you can do that. Maybe you need to say, I'm, as, a, as a parent, I'm going to make a stand as a child, I'm going to make a stand in my family, whatever. Maybe you have a need of another kind, but the altar is open for all that wish to come and pray, as Candy sings. I'm going to make a difference. That's what we all need to be saying.
Still time if you need to come and do business with the Lord. The altar is open for you. Say praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Lord. God is so good. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Shout it out this week to others. Amen. Yes. Uh, ask you to pray for uh, Jared Dodgins, family gentleman we've been praying for in Georgia. He had passed last night. Keep him in your in your prayers. I appreciate it. it was last night? It was for 11, 11.07. Keep him in your prayers. Um, Redemption Center, they're open uh, with the, over at the schoolhouse. Missions, the rooms, the furniture, and others. They open on Mondays and Tuesdays, 10 to 2, until it gets warmer. <laughs> yeah, the door without the awning in the back of the schoolhouse, use that one. Um, call, it's all good. And I appreciate them and all what they do. They've been busy this past week. So, <laughs> so but um, let others know there's some business cards back there in the back if you'd like to hand them out to let people know if they're like to donate or need or in need, give it a call. Give us a call. That's all I have. Anyone else have any announcements or you want to share? If we're clear. Amen. All right. Miss Brother Nick, if you would mind in closing this out. It's good to see everyone today. God bless you. <laughs>